Hey people, um, I'm going to be a little raw in this video. Um, I'm going to be really, really frank because, um, you know, I'm currently watching the, um, waiting for the verdict. I know that's not going to really, um, that's not really going to be announced until maybe, maybe four o'clock. I'm hoping maybe five. I don't know. But, um, I'm just seeing, I'm seeing a lot of these, um, comments and I see this, um, comment a lot. They're, they're talking about Kyle Rittenhouse. They're saying how, what was a child doing there to begin with? Why was he violating curfew? Why wasn't he home playing video games? Let me say this, man. If you were at a protest last year or a march or a peaceful protest or whatever the hell you want to call it, ask yourself this question. What were you doing there? Why were you there? What did you get out of doing that? What was your objective? Because I know why you were there. But I want to tell you this from the bottom of my heart. Everybody who participated in a march last year, a protest in the um, honor of George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor, and the list goes on. Anyone that was killed by police, you have done nothing at all. Tell me this for me, please. What has changed since last year? Tell me what has changed at all. Tell me one thing that you see differently. And I'll tell you what, nothing has changed at all. Everything is still the same. You know, I got in an argument with someone about this, and I told them, I asked them, explain racism to me. Explain it. What is it that you feel as though you are being deprived of that white people have that you don't? And he couldn't explain it to me. He just was beating around the bush, telling me how I'm an Uncle Tom and I'm a coon and how I need to shut up and how I kiss white people's ass. But he couldn't even explain to me what it was that he felt he, that was holding him back. But I understand because I used to think the same way, but I could never really explain what it was that was holding me back. Sometimes it's just, it, it really hurts to just admit that it's you that's holding you back. Your lack of skills, your lack of, of um, education are the things that hold you back, not other people. But you people who participated in those marches last year, have done nothing at all. I understand, you know, people do it out of fear. People do it out of popularity. People want to be seen. But this is very dangerous stuff to play with because when you enable people and give them the entitlement of certain rights and privileges and you tell them how, you know, um, we need to make up for all the past transgressions that our people have done to you done for done to you that's very dangerous because you know this right here is going to probably get a lot worse the more we we enable this kind of stuff now once again people say how what was he doing at the at, you know in Kenosha when he's just a kid, I've seen babies, you know, marching in the street with signs, you know, at night too. Yeah, yeah, you have kids there at night. They're, they're you know, they're with their parents. But what are they doing at night at a protest? Shouldn't they be in bed? I'll now tell you this, what he was doing there. He was trying to protect the neighborhood, the community. You know what happens when people burn down neighborhoods and protests and riots? That gives people the incentive to move and leave. And you know what happens after that? The property value of the area goes down. So that could possibly mean, oh, now it's going to become a ghetto pretty soon because no one that actually gives a damn about shit wants to live here. So 
You know, people change, people usually move, and that's when neighborhoods become the ghetto. Because it's happened to two of the neighborhoods that I lived in. Violence came, crime came, the people left, property value went down, it became cheaper for people to live, and then it became a horrible neighborhood to live in. So I'm pretty sure he cared about the community enough to protect it from potential rioting and looting. Well, it, it was already going on, but he had a he had an objective being there. What was yours? And don't give me that I'm standing up for the rights of African Americans. I'm um because I'm I, I don't understand what rights am I being deprived of. You can't tell me that though. I, I know why. I know you why you can't tell me. Because there are no rights that I'm being deprived of. There are no rights that anyone's being deprived of. But when we when we put in people's heads that they're a victim and they're being deprived of rights and they need to um, you know, be treated, you know, the same as, as any other person, that's when they're that's when that's a problem. We gotta stop doing that.